right ladies and boys and children and gods and deities and Christ himself. It's on the way. Elbath is coming. It's coming to town, baby. We got it. Dorian Bruggy showing up. Here we go. Ah, oh, shit's about to go down. What a fantastic chapter. Man, she's joining the crew. Buddy's joining the crew. We'll get into that later, but it's happening. It's happening, bro. That panel. That panel was straight up just obvious as hell. I'm sorry. That panel right there was a... Was a I'm a crewmate panel. Straight up. Oh, it's such a good panel as well, bro. Oh, every time Luffy goes into that Nika state, bro... I go into a state of euphoria, man. It's it's fantastic, man. I love the Gear 5. I love it so much. I just, I love it so much. <laughs> ah, bro. It's just, I lo I've said this before. I've said it before. I've been saying it about Haikyuu a lot. Uh, when I talk about why I like Haikyuu. And I'm going to talk about that in another video when I do get around to it. Um, I just love when, you know, a story is generally about just outputting positive energy. But it's not done in a corny way. It's done in a real realistic way. This is just like pure craziness, right? It's the positive energy that I love in stories. But in like a pure crazy way. It's not trying to be corny. It's not trying to be realistic. It's just, let's throw shit at the wall and see what happens. And I fucking love that, bro. And I just love how One Piece is going right now. It just feels like that. It feels structured, like a good story structure, but then they're just throwing shit at the wall. And I absolutely love that. Oh, it's getting it's so good. It's actually peak fiction. Like, right. I love this so much, man. I do. I I'm so excited, man. When the music starts playing. Oh, when the music starts playing when it gets animated, bro. And Dorian Broggy just show up. Oh man. We're getting Elbath. Finally, finally we're getting Elbath, man. Finally, after all these years, man. Oh, and you know what's gonna happen? You know what's gonna happen? Here's here's what I was thinking when I, I reread it here just before I did this review. And bro, we're gonna get a thing. They're now already allied with Luffy because when they took over the Hyrule Pirates or something, because obviously they were the new giant pirates, and they might have come back and like Hyrule out of respect gave them back the position. But I think they might already be. Our, allied with Luffy, or, or there's gonna be an interesting thing where combined with the Poneglyph, if they do do a Davy back fight, which is the big theory that everyone's kind of going with since Marge gave, uh, talked about it, it might be a thing where they end up being like, you know what, we might as well just do this, all right, whoever wins the Davy back fight will be allied with, because obviously they're friendly with Shanks as well as we saw, and they're friendly with Luffy, I can see that going on. And obviously they do care for Luffy, but obviously that might be hired in thing. And they might have, they might have just started their own gig. They were like, you know what? Let's do the pirate thing again. You guys can keep your own pirates. Maybe that was the thing, and they're just gonna be doing what, do it. You know, looking after Luffy for a while because they, because of Saul or something, or because of the Sun God thing, which is cool. Shanks obviously knows about it, so that's gonna be some stuff about Shanks going on. He knows a lot more than he's letting on. This is gonna be interesting. I do think. I talked about this last week and um, about the idea of Shanks and like wanting Luffy to follow a certain destiny or like not Shanks in particular, but Dragon or Shanks or some other third party being like, this is what Joy Boy is supposed to do. And Luffy being like, yeah, fuck that, man. I'm going to do my own. I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> right. And it's building up so much because they're building up the idea of Nika so much. Even in the Kuma flashback, Kuma had this belief in Nika. The freedom that he gives. Do you know what I mean? And all this. And it was all like, oh, look how free he is. He laughs in the music. The more he laughs, the stronger he gets. And everyone thinks of him as his savior. And Luffy will be a savior. But as I said before, his whole thing is, I am not a hero. And I think that's very important. He's going to do what Nika needs to be done, but in his own way. Make it his own. Undo fate. And do what he wants to do. Because this story is about inherited will. But most of all. It's about freedom. And that's what I love about this story. When I sit watching this story. You feel the freedom of Luffy. You feel the freedom of loads of characters. And that fight for freedom is great. You know what I mean? That idea of personal freedom. You know what I mean? That idea. Live your life how you want to live it. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Right? You can live in accordance with someone else's belief if that is what you want to do, but you don't have to. You know what I mean? You live your life. 
the best way you can. And that's main, the main message of the main message of One Piece I take from it. Besides all the deep messages of inherited will, you know, slavery, genocide, all that different, like, difficult stuff. The simple stuff is live your life the way you want to. You know, family is not only your blood. Family can, fa family's inherited will, all this type of stuff, right? The simple positive messages from One Piece that a lot of us take and understand, but aren't the ones you can go real in depth in the ideas of. I mean, hell, Gear 5 Luffy is all about liberation, right? The idea of liberate, in my idea, you know, being liberated, you know, the more free you are, you see? That's what I, that's what I like about One Piece, and we're getting more of this, bro. I know people are thinking he's getting slowly possessed, but I just think it's like a, the best way to describe Gear 5 is it's like being on alcohol, bro. You're just kind of like, your, your inhibitor is gone. Do you know what I mean? Like, human inhibitor is gone. He's just all about having the crack. We have seen him get more serious when shit needs to happen, like the final uh, moments against Kaido. But initially, as he gets used to the form, he's going to be more animalistic as he's just getting used to being in this joyful freedom form. But he's going to master it over time. Or it might be a thing where it's competing with his own will because we have heard about that before. But it's going to be just like Enma and Zoro. In fact, Enma might be a big hint towards that what happened with him and king oh man i don't know with him and uh, zoro against king i'm very very excited for that but it feels like Ed egghead is coming to an end really quickly it feels like this is like the final 10 to 15 chapters and i don't see rob lucci versus zoro being a proper fight at this stage because i feel like it, there has to be a proper fight between you know Luffy and St. J. Garcia, and there has to be, you know, stuff with Dorian Bragi to move on to Elbath, you know, Dragon has to show up, Kuma and Bunny have to get their, you know, their new ending. I don't know where this is gonna go, but let's just talk about the chapter from now on. Um, okay, Vegapunk, you know, has his little moment, you know, Bunny screams out, like, protect me and my father, right? And, uh, obviously Vega, it goes back and says, I didn't I couldn't bear the sight of seeing a child killed by the, a clone of their own father. So, my own selfish request was that Kuma only will be respond to your orders over anyone else. And that selfish desire will be shown no mercy as he gets stabbed through the chest. <laughs> right? And, uh... I don't think it. I don't think it's a death thing. I, I really don't. I don't think he's dead. I can feel it. I feel the idea. You know, it doesn't feel like a death. They don't pay that much attention to it. Like the whole death scene of sorts is like half a page. No, it's a full page. Okay. Yeah, it's a. It's not actually. It's not even a full page. It's like most of a page, and then it's like Kizaru, and then Kizaru flies up in the air. So it's like most of the page. And then he, he's talking again near the end of the chapter. So I don't think he's dead. I think he's severely wounded. They might have a proper death scene from him, for him later. But as of now, that is not a death scene. But I will say, I want Vegapunk to die. I'd rather Vegapunk dies than Kuma die. Right? If we have to have one sacrificial death in this arc, I want it to be Vegapunk. I want Kuma, you know, for as much as I was like, that's a join the crew look. I don't want Kuma to die, man. I want it to be a thing where Kuma survives and he's like, go have your adventures. This old man has some work to do. And then he might go off and do, you know, rejoin the revolutionary army. You know what I mean? He's like, a child's freedom is not for a father to take away. We will, you know, he'll say something like that. And he'll be like, we will have our fun when the dawn arrives to this world. You know, something like that. Something like kind of poetically corny as he rejoins Dragon hand in hand. And he goes off into the sunset. They have a nice summer wedding on Alabasta. And they, you know what I mean? And he goes, oh, will you, dragon, take Kuma, your lawfully wedded husband? I don't know the vows, man. Lawfully wedded husband is all I know. I don't know, like, what's it? Hand in hand, in sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Sac of, or sapphire scales and all. Will you, dragon, take Kuma to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. And it's a whole scene, they're all, you know, mushy, all that type of jazz. And 
Bonnie goes up to Dragon and he's like, you're a terrible stepdad. And Luffy kicks him in the balls and they walk off. There you go. That's that's my my Dragon and Kuma fan fiction. All right, there we go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's exactly what's going to happen. I, I speak Oda. I, I know what's I know what Oda's thinking. I'm pure, pure genius. What can I say? You know what I mean? Pure, pure genius. I need to learn my wedding vows, bro. I need, I need to, it's better for the skits. I need to get my, um, what, priest voice? Holy voice? I, uh, oh, that type of shit. I need to find that. So, I need to find that so much. But no, it does feel like a crew joining chapter. You know, just the way it's framed, man. That's such a, like, Bonnie, or that's such a Nami help me moment. The way it's framed. It just looks like it to me so much. I don't know. Also, Kizaru got one tapped again. Bro, I I was I was all about this, like, uh, you know, Kizaru actually did really well in that fight agenda, but I'm full of shit. He actually got one tapped. Again, and Luffy, like, Luffy didn't go down immediately. He's still fighting. So, that's mental, bro. He, also, food is his stamina, so he can literally, if he's fully stocked up, he can just go forever. But also, Jesus Christ, my guy. That's not a good look. I love you, Kizaru, but man, you get one tapped again. The, the Admiral, the Admiral Yonko agenda, as I say all the time, it's not... It's not looking good right now. It's not looking good. You get one tapped by the newest Yonko. Man, that's not good. You're still on business. I still love you, Kizaru. I w look, look, I, w I won't say I won't say too much bad, all right? I still love you. Still love you deep in my heart, okay? I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say too much bad about you, okay? You're still my favorite Admiral. I haven't haven't lost my feelings for you since the last chapter. Don't worry, I'll still have your shades. Still have your shades. <laughs> Hey, I I need I need I need those Kizaru shades, man. Oh, I need that suit. I need that suit so bad. Oh, it looks so fire in it, bro. <laughs> I genuinely would. That that Sanji cosplay, bro. I I I nailed it. I have to say, I feel like I nailed it. So I I I nailed a Kizaru suit, bro. Oh, I'd love that so much. That'd be so fire. Oh, that'd be so clean. But yeah, now we got one tapped again. Poor fella. Big rip. <laughs> Big rip. Okay. But speaking on um, less less admiral based agendas, this whole robot thing makes no sense to me now. What is this going to be? He reactivates again. What? Who is this? What is this? I uh, I thought Kuma's consciousness was going to be transferred into this robot. That's still my theory. But who is it? You know what is it? What what is the other options here? What this giant robot? What is he going to do? You know. What is his big plot? What is he? Is he an Elbath giant robot? Is he the original Nika? Is this, is this like the armor that the original Joy Boy wore? That could be something like that, actually. And then we see, like, them standing side by side. That'd be interesting, I think. But I don't know. I really don't know. I I need to, need to figure this out, though. I have no idea what this what this could be. Oh man, but saying that now, the Dorian Bra going back to the Dorian Brangy stuff because we haven't had enough time to talk about that. That was such a great moment. I didn't even think about that happening, man. I know this is unrelated to the you know a lot of stuff, but that was crazy. That was. Was that the ship that they tried to stop? I don't think so, because it was a marine ship going to Egghead. So this is an entirely different thing. But it looks so good when they show up. Oh my god. They're just so giant. And it just it looks so well done. And I love every moment of it. It's fantastic. Just the, oh, the pure power behind that scene. I love it so much. I cannot wait for Elbath, man. I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped, man. Oh my god, man. Bank holiday. It's a bank holiday this week. Just for me to think about this for another 24 hours, bro. Before I go back. Ah, uh, bro. Bro, we might... 
We might have a top arc in, in, in Egghead, bro. This might be my favorite arc by far near the end of it, bro. I need to reread all my favorite arcs, man. I need to give Whole Cake a good run because I rewatched the anime and it was really slow. There was a lot of filler bits, so I need to read it. See how I feel about it in the manga form because that used to be my favorite arc for the longest time. And then even I went through like a week where I was saying Wano when it ended and then I was like, nah, I can't be saying that. And so I went to went back to Whole Cake, then I rewatched Marine Ford and I was like, who I'm trying not to be a normie by putting Marine Ford as number one, but it's very hard when uh, when Daddy Whitebeard shows up. You know what I mean? It's it's very hard when uh, the greatest looking man in all of One Piece uh, just shows you up right away for like thirty chapters. You know, Whoa, I can't do his laugh. Uh, what I can't. I, I, I'm not even going to attempt it, bro. I'm not. I, I've attempted many laughs in 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 this channel and talking about One Piece, but Whitebeard's not one I'm going to uh, ruin, especially because I can't remember it off the top of my head. So, um, yeah. But my god, I'm so excited. And I can't wait to see Usopp's reaction to seeing them, man. He's going to do something. He has to do something really cool, this arc, to really show his strength. And then he's going to go to Elbath with a bit of extra confidence. Or he's going to do something and fail and go with a bit of with no confidence and then build it back up in Egghead. And that's going to be exciting, bro. That's going to be so exciting. Oh, man. But I have to say, it's a bit of an L for Sanji, this chapter bit of a bad look bro he goes to save bonnie he's the fastest man in the entire crew and he goes to save bonnie from kizaru doesn't even make it before luffy pushes his hand up to the air and one taps kizaru that's not that's not a good look now you could say he stopped he stopped before luffy got there but still kizaru was literally about to slice her in two okay you can't tell me he could have reached there. Okay. Let's see. He's going up. Is he ahead of Kizaru? He is. No way. Is that Bonnie? Is that Bonnie in that image of the... No, she doesn't... She's not wearing shorts. No, because Kuma's holding on to her. Yeah. It's Sanji. Yeah. Biggest deal. He's in front of them. And he still can't stop him. That's really not a good look. Oh, Sanji, that's bad. That's really bad. Oh, no. Power Scaler is going to have fun with this one. But uh, still love you, bro. Get rid of the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, go back to your... Uh, go back to that uh, that suave Onigashima look with the wine, the wine suit. I really want a proper wine suit now. I can't lie to you. Oh, that looks so clean. I need a proper one, like, properly tailored. Like, when, I, when I'm, like, 30 and have all the money in the world... Uh, have all the money in the world. Fuck, I'm not going to have all the money in the world. <laughs> when I'm 30 and I have enough money, I'm going to buy like a fully tailored like w rose wine suit and I'm going to have uh, it all tailored and I'm going to have like Sanji's name written in the, written in like uh, the fast, the fa in, like the writing. It's going to be like Sanji in like the coat, just uh, written around the coat. I don't know. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be real flashy. I'm going to have the gloves as well. Put on the gloves. It's going to be like fingerless gloves for the, for the frame or some shit. That'd be so cool. But enough talking about my fantasies about accessories of myself like uh like Sanji over here. This chapter was fantastic. I'm sure you can tell by my voice. I was so excited to read it. There's so much going on. I think Oda's gonna do really well with this. A lot of people might be scared about the fate setup, but I think it's gonna go down pretty well. And I'm excited to see how he subverts our expectations. Shanks is all a whole involvement in this is gonna be very interesting. Elbath is on the way, boys. Let's get excited. Alright. Yes! <laughs>